Who, is it? It's Jennifer and Bethany. Is that my favorite neighbor? Come in, please. Hello, Miriam. How are you? Daphne is here to play with Ali and Aisha. I am fine. Come, have a sit. Daphne, you are looking gorgeous. Thank you, Miriam. Where is Aisha and Louise? They are in their room. Kids, Daphne is here. We are coming, Mother. Hello, Daphne. Let's go and play in a room. I got this amazing puzzle. Let's solve it. Kids have fun. Okay, Mom. Jenny, would you care for some tea or coffee? Coffee would be great. I will be right back. I will help you. So how is everything? How is Eric? He is fine. He is out of town right now. Oh, I tried the recipe you gave. It was amazing. Eric loved it. I got that recipe from my friend, Stephanie. She is a great cook. Last week, I saw another recipe. I tried it yesterday. It was really great. Wait. I might have some leftovers at home. I will send it to you. You won't believe. What happened at work? There is a Muslim woman. I was having beef, and I wanted to share my lunch with her out of courtesy. You won't believe what she said. She said, she can't have it. The Quran forbids it. I was so shocked. Thank God. You don't follow the Quran. Jenny, Quran is the saying of Allah, the God. And I follow the Quran, and follow each and every commandment. Really? The program I saw last night was about Quran. It orders the Muslims to kill the non-Muslims wherever they find them. Welcome dear viewers, today we will be talking about the truth about the most violent religion of all time. Yes. You have guessed it right, it's Islam. The points I will be raising are very controversial. And just for informing you, I might even lose my life. But, for my audience, I am ready to put my life in stake. In the Quran, the Muslims are asked to kill the disbeliever wherever they find them. Folks, if you don't believe me, then let's see the quotation. Chapter 9 and verse 5 of the Quran says, Kill the disbelievers wherever you find them, and capture them and besiege them, and prepare for them each and every ambush. Folks, now answer me. Do you believe in the teachings of Islam? If your answer is no, then, you're a disbeliever. No doubt about that. Then, in the Quran the Muslims are commanded to kill the disbeliever. That's you. Be aware of them, they will try to harm in every way, you and your children. It's commanded in the Quran that the Muslims cannot take disbeliever as a friend. So, don't get any false hope. So, my advice is save you children and save yourself. Thank God. Marion doesn't follow the Quran. Is Marion like that? But, she looks so innocent. I am such a fool. Maybe, she is thinking to kill me right now, and her kids are slaughtering my Daphne. No, no. That can't be. I know her for years. She comes to my home when I am sick. When I go out, I leave Daphne with her. She took care of her. Maybe I should ask her. What if, she gets angry? No. She won't, she's so good to me. I should just ask her. Jenny? What are you thinking? What's wrong? Marion, last night, I saw this program, where they said, in the Quran, the Muslims are commended to kill the non-Muslims, wherever they find them. Is it true? Are you really commanded to kill us? Jenny, the bitter truth is, many anti-Islamists use violence as an excuse to malice Islam, and some political leaders, from both world, east and west do the same thing to manipulate general people for their own benefits, fame, money, power, appreciations etc. But the reality of the matter is very different. But, the verse they quote, is it really in the Quran? Jenny, let me elaborate the verses quoted most from the Quran for violence, it is from chapter 9 verses 1 to 6, 
freedom from all obligations is declared from Allah and his messenger, to those of the Mushrikun, with whom, you made a treaty. So, travel freely for four months as you will, throughout the land, but know that, you cannot escape from the punishment of Allah, and Allah will disgrace the disbelievers. And a declaration from Allah and his messenger, to mankind on the greatest day, that Allah is free from all obligations to the Mushrikun, and so is his messenger. So if you repent, it is better for you, but if you turn away, then know that you cannot escape Allah and give tidings of a painful torment, to those who disbelieve, except those of the Mushrikun, with whom you have a treaty, and who have not subsequently failed you in aught, nor have supported anyone against you. So, fulfill their treaty to them to the end of their term. Surely, Allah loves, righteous. Then, when the sacred months have passed, then kill the Mushrikun wherever you find them, and capture them, and besiege them and prepare for them each and every ambush. But if they repent, and perform prayer, and give charity then leave their way free, verily, Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. And if any one of the Mushrikun seeks your protection, then grant him protection, so that, he may hear the word of Allah, and then escort him to where he can be secure, that is because, they are men who know not. What is Mushrikun? Mushrikun means polytheist non-Muslim, it says to kill the non-Muslims. As you know, I am a Christian, so I am also a non-Muslim. Jenny, for better understanding of these verses, we must know the contexts. Prophet Muhammad was born in Mecca, and received his prophethood at the age of 40. People of Mecca were polytheists and idolaters. When Prophet Muhammad started propagating monotheism, it created frictions between the Muslim and Mushrikun. Mushrikun is the Arabic word for polytheists and idolaters. At first, Muslims were ordained to keep patience against torture of the Mushrikun, of Mecca, but eventually the torture became very brutal, and many Muslims were killed. So, the Muslims were ordained to leave their properties, and migrate to Medina to live peacefully. The people of Medina welcomed Muslims with open hand. But it was not palatable for the Mushrikun of Mecca. The Mushrikun of Mecca attacked Medina three times, but they lost to the Muslims. After the third attack on Medina, Mushrikun of Mecca and Muslims met at Hudaybiya, a place between Mecca and Medina, and came to a negotiation, and decided to a peace treaty for ten years, but it was broken by the Mushrikun by Asidli. Then, the first six verses of chapter 9 was revealed. And amazingly, Mecca was conquered by the Muslims without a single drop of blood. When the Mushrikun saw a huge Muslim army, they gave up. Really? Without a drop of blood? Amazing. Jenny Muslims are not ordered to kill all non-Muslim. Whoever told you that he is a big liar? They are trying to create mischief in the society. And when Quran speaks of Mushrikun, in these verses, it does not mean American nor any other nation, ethnicity or religion. It means the Mushrikun of Mecca of that time, who were oppressing the Muslims. And, to respond to those who take these verses of chapter 9 out of context, two verses of Quran is sufficient for them. Chapter 60, verses 8 and 9. Allah does not forbid you to deal justly, and kindly with those who fought not against you on account of religion, and did not drive you out of your. Verily, Allah loves those who deal with equity. It is only as regards those who fought against you, on account of religion, and have driven you out of your homes, and helped to drive you out, that Allah forbids you to befriend them. And whosoever will befriend them, such are the wrongdoers. Jenny, let's say some people entered your home, and then, they kicked you out. Is that fair, is it wrong, to fight those people and take back your belongings? No. Of course not. So. Allah is asking the Muslims, not to fight those who didn't drive them out, but to fight those people who drive the Muslims from their own home. And not to be friend with those enemies. It really makes sense, thank you Miriam. I always felt so insecure in front of Muslims, and the programs they show in the cable, they never mentioned anything about how oppressed the Muslims were. They never give the context. I was so foolishly worried for no reason.
These sorts of programs misguides us and tries to break bonding between people. Thanks Miriam you are a true friend. And sorry I doubted your religion because of those frauds. Please don't embarrass me. You are like a family to me and I know Islam is the most misunderstood religion, it was not your fault. Mariam, it was really nice talking with you. I don't understand why do people try to malign Islam this way. The information that you gave was amazing, have never heard it before. Bye. See you in class tomorrow. See you later, Mariam. Take care, and come again.